Oh my gosh. Well, I had to, um, I had to think about her accent. Obviously, it's not mine. She's uh, from Scotland originally. Um, so I did some work on that. I based her voice on a really fantastic makeup artist called Claire Harris that I worked with, who's just the most fantastic person. And she's really, um, she's really warm and uh, also a bit bonkers, which I think are kind of the biggest Tani Maria uh, attributes that I could think of when I was preparing. I haven't really played anyone quite as repressed as Danny Maria, I don't think. Um, but it's definitely, I mean, I understand it. It's, uh, she's carrying a lot of trauma and repressing your feelings is sometimes a very good coping mechanism. And that's what she does. She just keeps a lid on everything. She distracts herself through, uh, cooking, uh, through food, um, and through people. She really wants to sort of um, gather people all the time and, and, and tend to them as she does to her garden and her herbs and the animals. And that's really a kind of laudable way to behave, but also is a good way to hide. If you're always, you know, asking questions or running errands or extending your energy outwards, people don't really notice maybe that you haven't given away a lot about yourself or that you're not explaining things about yourself when you're not having a great day. So she hides behind all of that. Um, it was very interesting to think about that. Well, the way that we live is very different. Uh, my house is um, always like a train station. There's a lot of us. We live together, we're a very close family, and we travel a lot quite far away from where we live. That's why I'm here now in South Africa, and my family are too. Um, and her world, her geographical world, is, is, is so much smaller, and she chooses so much time alone and that would be very different from the way we live and therefore the way that we interact with the world. I think one of the things we have in common um, but I think that hers comes more from the fact that she is alone a lot. Um, I think mine probably comes when I'm trying to work out things in my head maybe for a, maybe for a part or a character or maybe just something that's going on but I talk to myself a lot in real life and she talks to herself a lot but I think that she does it just because because she is alone a lot so she kind of you know she voices her questions and opinions so that she can hear them clearly or she she, she talks to more like her her chicken I suppose I've always felt that it was the mutton stew, that it was her lamb stew, because that's the first one that she offers. And it's it's to Martine, um, and Martine's letter and all of that experience touched her so deeply. Um, and that she really, I think she searched really deeply for the right um, answer through food. So I guess that's the one I think of most. And also it was the first one that I read. I read it in the things I was sent when I was reading the very first time, the pages from the story. So I guess that's kind of the one I, I, I think about. And also we have, like my mom makes a really good lamb stew. So it is something kind of that I know a little bit. So I, I suppose I probably think it's that. I think she would survive in a big city. I think that Tani Maria would survive anywhere. She is a survivor. That's her absolute essence, I think. But I think that she would be very lonely because she wouldn't find it easy to be part of that community. She wouldn't, to have a community, she wouldn't find it easy. Um, and she wouldn't be bonding hugely with, If imagine in a city she would live in an apartment block or something. She wouldn't be so close with all of her neighbors there because she wouldn't want to let them in. So then what is your opportunity to meet people a little further afield? It's a little more, it's more difficult in a city. Um, yeah, she would definitely survive, but she would be very, lonely and would become more and more isolated, I think, and talk more and more to 
to herself or her pet, whatever she was allowed to have in her city apartment, maybe not a chicken. Um, Morag the chicken was an absolute star. I mean, I don't know, I should have read these scripts more carefully, but so far I've been completely upstaged by chickens, hadidas, snakes, um, cows, there, and I know there's going to be more. And um, the chickens were brilliant and actually really, uh, I couldn't believe it, but they were, I didn't think that they would do any of the things that they were scripted to do. But totally, Morag just behaved like an absolute dream all the time and allowed me to pick her up and allowed me to carry her. And that was fantastic. The Hadidas, on the other hand, were now sworn enemies, the Hadidas and I. Just the one that we worked with, but then pretty much all of them are just kind of coming around in the morning now, waking me up and I don't know. Yeah, that was a whole, that was, well, true to the script, I suppose. Yeah, it hated me and I hated it.